Million Cups happens uh, every Wednesday. It's the same format. Two startups give a six-minute presentation, and then we are a friendly and challenging audience that uh, gets them farther along than when they walk in the door. We have 20 minutes to do that. We have two presenters today, and our first one is Chef Kirk <coughs> Stiles. Welcome, Kirk. Okay. How you doing? Good. Um, I use fresh ginger to cook, not to drink whiskey. <laughs> Anyways, my uh, name, I am uh, Chef Kurt Stiles. My background is 30 years of food service industry, uh, both uh, research chef and chef corporate chef. Um, I moved to Minneapolis um, 10 years ago to start with Caribou Coffee. The Caribou Coffee has zero R&D and uh, started with uh, Caribou Coffee 40 stores 2004 and I left uh, four, uh, 400 stores 2007 and I begin to consulting with uh, General Mills, Subway, Hormel, etc. And I started the a company called Intelligent Ingredients. My thought is design and create the uh, gluten-free, allergy-free before the trends. Mind you, 2007. I started the business 2007 uh, late, and I raised uh, $300,000 to make uh, gluten-free, uh, allergy-free bars and cookies. And I ordered the uh, bars and cookies from a uh, private label in uh, Iowa. I started the business, a uh, launched the business, uh, uh, December, December 1. I have a website, healthychef.us, and marketing company, and uh, pre employees. Two weeks later, I had a massive stroke. And I have a um, theme is in the hospital, I told my wife, said, do not attempt, you know, do not have a priest. Anyways, <laughs> uh, about three days later, my family or the priest last uh, rites. I woke up smiling. I'm back, you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, New Year's Eve, Molly and I went to um, uh, speed therapist office, New Year's Eve. Anyways, I began my recovery all over again. I practice the sounds, O, A, E, the uh, letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, numbers, one, two, three, all over again, just like uh, international people to learn the language, language, uh, language, language all over again. Anyways, my uh, thought is I w will work again over time. Recovery is four years and counting. Every day I read out loud maybe 20 minutes in the car, my uh, kids' books, my uh, trades journals or magazines. About um, three years later, I uh, have a board position with the uh, colonology program in Marshall. I went to uh, Marshall and uh, hired three students to help me to design and create a cookbook using my story recovery and lifestyle changes. And um, over time, my cookbook is finished two years later. 
I received the cookbook from China, a thousand copies, last August. The students helped me to set the recipes, design the cover, edit the whole book, uh, have a graphic artist, and voila, I know food, not technology. Anyways, um, oh. I started uh, the business uh, again, Good For You Ingredients, LLC. My brand is America's Healthy Chef, uh, .com or .net, whatever. I uh, hired uh, the marketing companies, uh, Monkey Pickles from uh, Maple Grove, and I hired um, videography to help me film my cooking show or cooking classes. Um, my vision is um, teach the people about wellness, prevent disease, and food plan, not diet. And um, because my target market business is hospitals, doctors, natural doctors, wellness clinics, uh, acupuncture or massage, Eastern medicine, not Western medicine. I took one drug per day. I took 12 supplements per day. Even think about it. Anyways, um, my target market to consumers is sick people. Myself, I have a stroke, cancer, diabetes, autism, etc. I need help to understand. Um, I will sell my speech, and uh, marketing company is there. Uh, I need uh, help to understand. Um, the agents or a company to help me sell the uh, speeches or products. And that's it. Done, all right? Six minutes. Okay. <laughs> What's your, uh, sort of your personal testimony about how, maybe specifically, the, your, your food plan? Yep. Changing some of, did you change some of your eating habits? I'm assuming you did after your stroke, or did you always sort of have that? It sounds like you had that gluten free um, already started, or that idea concept before it was really a trend. Yep. Sort of, was that because of health concerns? You saw there was a connection there, or what was, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, to. Tying that into yep. selling this because of your personal testimony. Look at where I was and where I've come because of this plan. Yep. Um, ironically, I uh, finished my video before my stroke and after my stroke. And I speak on three topics, you know, motivation, obviously, <laughs> good for you ingredients, uh, food, and um, uh, diet or food plan. My, the cookbook has, based on the food plan, is um, nuts, healthy oil, you know, grass-fed beef, turkey, lean meat, organic vegetables, just like uh, the, the uh, theme is uh, Medtronic or Med Diet, Paleo, Paleo Diet, just like that, only better for you. Yeah, I focus on sick people cancer, diabetes, uh, stroke, because the people have two or three problems. The, for example, the stroke, people do not eat vegetables. Why? Cumin, you know, pills. Do not eat uh, broccoli, spinach. Why? Because the drug uh, connects the body. Yeah. I need something, ingredients, to react the body. For example, cancer, you know, a lot of people to do not, you know,
tell the doctor about uh, allergic of corn. Okay, gluten-free diet is based on corn and rice, not wheat. Autism, same thing. Uh, the, uh, for example, my therapist, Ken, um, Kelly and Ann, love gluten-free diet to cheat the autism patients. No wheat, no corn, no soy, none. Yep, cooking show online, and the um, method is uh, Monkey Pickles has a uh, contact with the uh, gluten, um, um, oh yeah, the name, um, Google. And Google pay me 70% of the advertising. And I have an ebook already, and I have uh, several ebooks. For example, um, gluten, sodium, sugar. 15, 17 pages on whatever. And the market company uh, separate the cookbook using the categories entrees, dessert, only. Ebook only. Another revenue. Products. Spice line. America's healthy chef. Mirrors the cookbook. Cumin, ginger, garlic. Uh, uh, whatever. And um, products line. Energy bars. Energy brinks. You name it. I will get the uh, company to private label again. I have no money yet. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I uh, sit down with uh, five doctors, and the um, step is cancer, one, heart attack or disease, two, and then stroke. And then autism, you know, whatever, five, six. I focus on three types of disease only. Stay tuned. Over time, a year later, yeah, have a one person, me, you know, yep. yeah. So most of this is done through uh, online and, and uh, web and that kind Yeah, of thing. and I uh, begin with the business uh, after the holidays, you know, early January. Website, the um, cooking chemo is uh, cooking classes. I have far, partner with uh, uh, North Memorial Hospitals to teach uh, people or stroke survivors about uh, eating healthy, cooking with one arm. 90% of the stroke survivors do not work, do not drive, do not anything. I'm lucky. Look at me. I'm back. And I teach passionately about uh, my recovery. And my uh, survivor's friends listen and watch and, okay, I do it. I do it. Motivation. You know, 90% do not arrive, do not work. Sad. Paralyzed. Wheelchair. Yep. I can't hear you. What? The food in your books? Yeah. I know that's not part of the product line. But yep. Is in the future, perhaps, turning that into a product? Like a, a yes. Yep. 
research chef for 10 years. I know manufacturers, but I need money. <laughs> the product line is my friend, Tim Ziegler from Denver. He has a company to produce spice line. Done. Next question, you know, energy posts, you know, energy bar, you know. I know a lot of people, a private label. Minimum is a thousand dollars, piece of cake. But, you know, for example, I have a gluten-free bar, 2004 of five. I spent a hundred thousand dollars on three trucks load of products, three screws, a lot of money. You know? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. Yeah. And the second question I have is, I've considered social media to, to push your product to YouTube, where you can broadcast your, uh, I guess, your cooking shows. Yes, the plan is uh, Monkey Pickles, uh, film my video, and host the YouTube, and whatever, most, so many media. For example, I started with uh, Danielle, from Monkey Pickles two uh, weeks ago. I have uh, 200 likes from the Facebook. Today is 3,500 likes. Two weeks, really good company, yeah. smart. And that's it. So media, uh, YouTube, and a lot of uh, effort I have uh, no idea to understand technology. I love food, I, I love research, and voila, but stay tuned. <laughs> How many units do you have left of 1,000 500, yeah. And uh, I'm, my thought is uh, another 1,000 or more the, for example, I tried to print the cookbook in the USA. How much? The cookbook is 200 pages, 200 pictures, $30. China, seven. Landed in Minnesota, Minneapolis, eight books, eight, eight fifty. My uh, marketing budget is four books, of uh, $4 per book, equals uh, $12 per book. Retail, uh, uh, wholesale with a contributor is $15. Direct is, you know, $20. Retail is $30. USA, minimum $30. I charge $50? Come on. My cookbook is my story and recovery, but uh, a thousand, a uh, hundred uh, classical recipes. But I researched and found the audience or customers do not pay until or after $25. And that's it. Cookbooks only. Doesn't matter. Yeah. The e-books, you would be able to bring that cost down to, or make available the e-books at what cost? Besant, Betens, uh, Amazon is nine ninety nine Walmart price, mm -hmm. and uh, re retail on the website is fourteen ninety nine or whatever. I will research two or three months and found lower price. Lower, not high, <laughs> and re relatively uh, small ebooks, maybe uh, 15 pages, sodium, uh, gluten, whatever, sugar, eh, five bucks, you know. I, um, you know, uh, the um, survey called uh, Monkey Surveys. Yeah. Yeah. I researched uh, and found a year ago. The audience, my friends, and whatever, a hundred thousand, a hundred people. 
I will pay you five, six bucks per ebook. And that's it. I started with uh, the ebook is a uh, small uh, ebook is uh, four bucks, five bucks, and large. My cookbook is fifteen dollars. Amazon is well, whatever. Amazon is, you know, uh, advertising. Yeah. yeah. It's an impressive uh, quality of book that you have there. I'm looking at the. Our book, not me, my students. Every book I donate one buck for a soak survivor and one buck for a South Minnesota colonology program. I started the board uh, 10 years ago and still learning. The, the board contains uh, General Mills, Ormel, Schwanz, Lando Lakes, you know, um, a Cargill, and the uh, 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 School teach colonology and hospitality too, four years. Uh, the board raised a uh, million dollars over time and built the kitchen in the school and added uh, area, the um, uh, private uh, nonprofit um, from uh, Minnesota, Aries to help uh, the students to help uh, understand dairy, um, bakery, whatever. And that's it. I hired a marketing, um, marketing company and video augury already and I need help to understand uh, my, uh, my speech. Uh, I need an uh, agent or company to represent us. My target market is hospitals, you know, doctors, Eastern medicine, uh, you know, whatever. And my consumer tar market, market is uh, sick people, me, stroke, cancer, uh, diabetes, and corporate, you know, a lot of money. And my thought is, um, my speech is relatively short, 45 minutes or, you know, one hour. And lunch and learn, one hour. And I have a, a method to give the um, customers the um, ingredients and the recipes and samples in the uh, lunch and learn. And two customers help me to uh, make the lunch a half an hour in the office. And the motivation is um, my stroke and recovery and whatever. And the final um, speech is um, good for your ingredients. To teach, for example, uh, therapist, th therapist, doctor. Doctors has seven hours of nutritional in the world or in the, the, um, the college. Seven hours nutrition. Seven years equals seven hours. One hour per year. <laughs> Anyways, I need uh, help to uh, sell my speech. My product is online, piece of cake. And I need a kitchen. I, um, two or three sites, but I need space to store my ingredients, you know. Grass-fed beef and you know, organic vegetables is uh, expensive. <laughs> Thank you. And I am Austin Aho. I'll tell you a little bit about what I do. <laughs> so hi. Um, it's really nice to see some videographers in the crowd. Um, I am humble to say that I am in the oldest profession known to, to the human race. 
And I know what some of you might be thinking, but it's actually storytelling. Um, I'm a storyteller. <laughs> and people have been telling stories for a long time. You know, it's how we communicate. I love what I do. Um, I didn't always tell stories for a living. I used to work at an investment bank. Um, I worked in London and Singapore, um, large, great institutions, um, but they were really impersonal. And I, after traveling, I, I saw a commonality between cultures, between people, um, between all these different languages. And that was that they all told stories. And this is how we communicate with people. This is how we connect with people. Um, it's a really powerful tool, um, not only for selling um, products and services and apps, but also for healing. Um, Michaela, my fiance, is a psychologist. And um, we just went to a conference where they were telling, they were talking about storytelling as a way of healing. If we're able to look into our past and retell our stories in a new way, we're able to redefine how they shape us. So they're very powerful tools, and um, I'm happy to say that I love working with happy people. Um, another great part about freelancing um, is, is getting to choose who you work with and for what um, you know, projects you work for. And so I like to say that you know, it's either going to be something that I'm really passionate about, the projects, it's going to help me pay the bills, or it's going to help me um, gain more experience and, and kind of like further along my career. So those are the three different pools I like to think of when I'm thinking about, will this be a good relationship? Um, so for like a lot of nonprofits um, and maybe new apps that are coming out that we believe in, we'll, um, you know, not really, we'll, we'll basically work low bono or pro bono or whatever you'd say. Um, and then for some of our larger clients, you know, we'll work for, you know, Fortune 500 companies and, and shoot videos that are more complex, you know, between, um, I'd say like our, you know, we shoot music videos for around 5,000 up to, you know, 50,000, 100,000 for a, a corporate, you know, internal commu communication uh, program. That's like a, a series. So um, working with, with people is, is a lot of fun. We get to tell their stories and, and that's really what it is. It's, it's finding out what what is the um, underlying passion that you have? Like, why did you start doing what you do? Um, this is what people want to connect with. They don't want to just see your app. They don't want to just see your book. They want to know, why did you start it? What got you into it? Um, because once they connect with, with you, with, with like the core of who you are, um, they're going to be able to support you, whether that's tell their friends about, you know, this guy's authentically interested in storytelling or, you know, this guy really believes in this app and, you know, I, I believe him um, to, you know, more of like an internal communication for a large corporation where it's going to be, you know, we really believe in diversity and uh, we're going to uh, show that in this video um, that we're actually investing in um, these programs. So there's a lot of different uses for these stories and, um, you know, it all comes down to money often. Um, I see the screen isn't calibrated, which is a, it's a something good to point out. You know, um, with every video, uh, you have to really think about where these videos are being shown. Um, and so, if they're going on on Vimeo, they're going to be on a lot of different you know devices, and they're never going to look that th the way they do on your device. And so, it's always something that we think through and try to prepare for, um, and at least note um, you know when it doesn't match up. It's good to to learn from these kind of experiences. Um, but along with making money, uh, we, we do want it to be a good investment for all of our clients. Um, basically, we're not happy unless the client's happy. You know, it's a real service-driven business, as I'm sure you're aware of. Um, but at the, you know, it, it's an investment. Um, it builds brands. Um, it's basically creating a deeper value for, for your company. And usually, I don't need to spend too much time explaining why videos are valuable, because we all use them, and we know when we see a, a, a video that, that we like. Um, so I think we can all understand how valuable that is. Um, so I've been freelancing for the past like 24 months, uh, making videos on my own, reaching out to clients, building that database and that network, and, and learning a lot from you know, pre-production, meeting with clients, building the trust, kind of figuring out what their needs are to production and renting the gear and setting up the shoots and 
you know, managing all of that, as I'm sure you guys are all aware of, um, to post-production, you know, editing and coloring and, um, you know, doing some animation and motion tracking text and a lot of fun stuff with really, really high uh, advanced equipment. Um, but I realized that there was some limitations. Being an entrepreneur, you know, a lot of you are, you, you know, you wear a lot of hats. Um, and I was feeling like I couldn't, I was plateauing. My, my, my videos were plateauing. And so um, yesterday was actually a first day of a new partnership um, with Wowza. It's a, it's a, I don't know if you know of them, they, they make websites um, for, um, they call it data-driven websites. They work with healthcare companies around the country and um, other large um, companies. They bought a, a video production firm in St. Cloud and they brought me on to basically run their production and post-production. So I'm working with Wowza, which means I have a producer and I have a team and some creatives and you know, just more collaboration. So I'm really excited to give away some of the logistics um, and some of the, the, the more the detail-oriented work and kind of stay on the creative side um, and, and make better looking videos that are more successful for our clients. So that's kind of like a new partnership that I'm really happy to, to um, tell you about. Streaming Studios was the name, is the name of my freelance company. Um, so we do, you know, like live events and weddings now, and I'll probably still do that on the side on the weekends, but most of the majority of the work is going to be through Wowza, just so that I can, um, you know, provide a better, better product for my clients. Um, and this last video I'm going to show you um, is an example of how we can tell stories without even saying anything at all. Um, mostly when we, when we watch videos, there's a lot of, a lot of things happening. Um, this is supposed to be a simple, um, a simple video that, that kind of shares a, a special moment without, um, without getting it, uh, like language and um, other things that usually get in the way.
So, questions? How do you start? How do you think about starting this business? If you're obviously in a different business before. Yeah, good question. Um, it it kind of came naturally. I had another business. It was a hobby business called Stand Up Minnesota. I started that, giving adventure tours on the Mississippi River. Um, and we were, you know, taking people out on these tours, taking pictures. This was like four years, four years ago, and um, realized the pictures are a great way to share a story, share this experience. So the pictures turned into video, and I was making, you know, probably, I think the most was eight videos in one week, just from the weekend adventures that we were giving. And people were sharing these videos, and people were buying more tours because of these videos. And I was like, oh my God, the power of these videos is so real. And then doing, creating so many videos for so many people. I mean, they were, <laughs> they were all the <laughs> very similar videos of people going down the river and having the time of their life. But um, I realized like the connection was, was, was so powerful and I really enjoyed it. Um, so from there, the process grew to you know, buying gear and taking classes and um, growing from there. Yeah, good question. You know, I, I think right now I would say I'm a freelancer that just got hired. So for small projects like a wedding or a music video, um, it might just be my time on the, on the weekends, but um, my 40 hours a week are going to be dedicated to bringing those people into Wowza. Um, so for example, yesterday I met with a guy at Coco where I freelance and he has um, a new app coming out. Um, it's for the, the iPhone or the, the iWatch that's coming out in the first quarter. And he's like, you know, we need to tell this story. Um, it needs to be really um, high quality. And so he has a budget for $25,000 for this video. And so um, I, I wouldn't do that on my own. I'm gonna, I'm, we're setting up a meeting, you know, to, to bring in the team, have the producer there, kind of schedule out the work, schedule out the shoot so that we can make sure that it's uh, done well. So, yeah, I would say, you know, everything's going to be going through Wowza now unless it's really kind of just a personal project. Good question. Uh, as a freelancer, I'm also curious your transition to this position. Did you decide that you needed to uh, partner with them because it would help? I mean, was it, was it motivated by needing to get better uh, income and employment, or was it motivated because you like this team that they had at Walza? Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's a great question too. Um, so I started reaching out to different firms actually. I hadn't heard of Wowza. I was reaching out to Splice, which is a post-production uh, team in Minneapolis. Um, I'm sure you've heard of them. Pixel Farm was another one I was reaching out to. They do post-production stuff. Um, and then like Periscope, some of the other agencies. Um, because I was looking for collaboration um, but a lot of these teams, you know, it would be less full production and more really specific, you know, deep knowledge of uh, like uh, VFX or, um, and, and I was okay with that. I'm okay with, um, you know, that type of learning. Um, and during the search, the past two months that I've been doing, um, my, I had resumes on indeed.com and this employer actually found me and sought me out. And so he told me he had like 80 applicants for the job and um, my situation seemed to line up well with their team. And it's a, it's a really good fit, actually. They just have, they have like, you know, a programmer, a creative, a developer. It's a very um, diverse team that does everything from mobile apps to kind of like the data side of websites, which is great for video because along with video, they need to be measurable outcomes with, you know, each video. So um, teaming up with, with people who do that really well um, helps prove that the videos are not only beautiful, but they're also successful. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, and it, as all the videographers here know, it really depends on the organization. Um, I'd say for the, the videos that we're trying to shoot for are um, large companies, like Fortune 500 companies, down to um, people who are launching a new product, like this, this app, that basically if you need a, a video to, to pitch to investors. So we're trying to shoot things from 
7,000 to 100,000. Um, before I started, it was, it was lower than that. It was probably, um, I was shooting videos between two and 7,000. Um, and that was because I was just, you know, investing in them. And a lot of them were projects I enjoyed and still enjoy. You know, I work for Seed Savers, which is like a seed exchange. And um, I'm telling their story for their 40th year anniversary. And I'm doing some little documentary projects for, for the city of Minneapolis. And um, the projects that I enjoy. But um, I would say that with a full team, um, those projects aren't really feasible. And so we're, we're taking bigger projects that we believe in, that we know we can, you know, really create something meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, but there might be people who still are, geez, I don't know if I need to spend 5,000, 7,000. And um, um, what would you, kind of how do you impact that and maybe do some presentation? I don't know if you still do that as well. Sort of sell yourself in the company. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we meet with people all the time to talk about this. A lot of times people already know the value of what a video will bring. Um, but along with that, uh, we, we like to tell people that there are metrics that we do present to each client. And we do that in a variety of ways. One of my favorite is we create landing pages for the videos. So, you know, with most um, marketing, you have ads that you put out in different places, like on Google. So, like, Google AdWords is a place that we would place an advertisement for. And then that link would link to a um, landing page, which is a new web page that we create on your site that is just tailor-made for that video. So that's one way to bring people into this video. And then with that video, we'll typically have a call to action, which is like one thing to do. It's like sign up for our newsletter, download, you know, whatever it is, support this Kickstarter campaign. Um, and then, so we, we know how many people are coming into that landing page. So we know how many people are clicking on it. We know how much money you're paying per click. We know how many people are going through to the next level, the call to action. And then we know from that call to action what they're doing. So, you know, we can measure pretty precisely, actually, you know, what the return on investment is. And, um, and then we also try to, you know, create additional value above and beyond what you think you're going to get. So when we shoot a video, we'll also shoot other things like um, we'll just talk, tell me about your business. And we'll, we'll get the backstory. And then with that backstory, we'll create a little promo video that'll be in, instead of in your about me section. It'll be you telling them you know, why you got into the business instead of a little paragraph. And so we'll throw in little additions like that to kind of just create extra value. We always like to have the clients feeling like they're getting a lot more than they paid for, no matter how much they're paying. That is such a great question. I'm still figuring that out because it's so new. But it's kind of like getting married, you know? It's like uh, before there's a lot of variables and you don't exactly know when your next clients are going to come. You just know that every project has to be better than your last. And um, it's a lot of, um, there's a lot more um, maybe fear that can creep in at different times. It's like a roller coaster. I feel like right now I'm on a roller coaster, but I'm on a roller coaster with a team of people that I know and trust. And it's like we're all holding hands. And so we're on this ride together. And anything you want to comment on? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it feels kind of like we're, we're, we're in it together. And um, you know, they have 12 years of experience in the advertising industry. So they have like a lot of deep knowledge of you know, um, how to get these projects managed. Uh, in an efficient way, and so I'm just excited. I think you know the ride's going to be a lot, a lot bigger and a lot faster. Could you see yourself sort of staying in this company? It sounds like you're going to gain a lot of experience from the people around you as well, and then sort of maybe in the future do the same thing again. Or I mean, I, if you don't want to. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's a. Public, but. I know it's a really good question. Um, part of the reason I got into video storytelling was to be mobile. Um, stories are, you know, shared all around the world. Um, and, and so I'm really happy to say that um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where this grows. 
and I'm hoping that grows into an international opportunity where it's not just local here in the Twin Cities, but it's you know it's a global um, it's a global idea, it's a global venture where we're helping clients all over the world. Like I've done missions in Southeast Asia with Operation Smile. I would love to go and tell some of those stories, you know. Um, and I think that's one way to really keep the entrepreneurial spirit alive within a company. So yeah, I hope to really just foster, you know, my entrepreneurial spirit within this company. Yeah. Um, ways that you can help me would be, you know, if you know anyone who wants to tell a story, send them my way. I would love to, to talk with them, um, bring, them in, bring my, one of our directors and one of our producers in to just give a free consultation. You know, all of the consulta consultations are free. Um, if you have any ideas for, you know, if you, have, if you have videos that you really love, I love watching those, so you know I always love watching great stories and documentaries and even promos. So, you know, send those my way too. And if you have any um, advice on how I can make this presentation more, you know, pleasable to your ears, always tell me that too. I guess. <laughs>